Every spacecraft that has ever left Earth has relied on propellant to get it to its destination. Typically, a spacecraft moves by igniting its fuel in a combustion chamber and expelling hot gases. The velocity of the spacecraft depends on the type of propellant it carries and its thruster efficiency. On 29 October 2018, NASA's Parker Solar Probe became the fastest ever human-made object, attaining a velocity of 153,454 miles per hour. Parker Solar Probe uses a monopropellant hydrazine thruster, where the decomposition of hydrazine produces thrust. But what if someone claims he can build a thruster which can propel the spacecraft to near light speed, that too with carrying no propellant on board? The NASA-funded Mega Drive, invented by an 80-year-old physics professor from California State University, claims to achieve light-speed interstellar travel in the future. Who is behind this invention? How does it work? And why NASA funds it? That's the topic for today's video. Watch till the end to know more about this out-of-this-world claim. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more futuristic tech-related videos. Jim Woodward, an 80-year-old lung cancer survivor and California State University physics professor, claims that he developed a new kind of propulsion system that could carry a spacecraft into interstellar space near the speed of light. Mach Effect Gravitational Drive, or the Mega Drive, is a propulsion system designed to produce thrust without propellant. Instead of propellant, the Mega Drive relies on electricity for propulsion. It uses a stack of piezoelectric crystals and some controversial physics to generate thrust. Piezoelectric crystals are crystals which, when compressed or struck, generate an electric charge. That is, they convert applied mechanical stress into electricity. The reverse also works for such types of crystals. They vibrate tens of thousands of times per second when zapped with an electric current. Woodward claims that, when such oscillations sync up in just the right way, the small drive lurches forward. It wouldn't accelerate quickly, but it could accelerate for a long time, gradually gaining in velocity and approaching light speed. The electric energy required can be supplied via solar panels or through an onboard nuclear reactor. If Woodward's device works, it'd be the first propulsion system that could reach another solar system within an astronaut's lifespan. So, how does this work? Woodward relies on the concept of inertia to develop his project. Inertia is the resistance you feel whenever you push on an object. Woodward follows the idea of a 19th century physicist, Ernst Mach, who proposed that inertial forces experienced by a body in non-uniform motion are determined by the quantity and distribution of matter in the universe. In other words, the resistance you feel when you try to push a parked car forward is partly due to star stuff billions of light years away. Einstein called this idea Mach's principle and incorporated it into his general theory of relativity. Even though the physicist Carl Brands used mathematics to demonstrate that inertia could not be explained by the gravitational influence of distant matter in the universe, Woodward feels that Brands had gotten it all wrong. According to him, if you accept Einstein's view that inertia is linked to gravity, it can open up the possibility for propellantless propulsion. According to Einstein, an object's energy is equal to its mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. That means, if you change an object's energy, you will also change its mass. An object's mass is a measure of its inertia, so changing its energy will also change its inertia. And according to Mach's principle, inertia and gravity are interlinked. So, as per Woodward, it should be possible to detect brief changes in an object's mass as its energy fluctuates. And if part of an object accelerated at the exact moment when it became a little heavier, it would pull the rest of the object along with it, thus creating thrust without propellant. He hopes that combining hundreds or thousands of these drives produce enough thrust to send a spaceship to the stars in less than a human lifetime. Woodward has been studying gravity since 1967. After years of research, in 1995, his idea merged into a full theory and he turned his attention into building a thruster to prove it. Woodward mounted the piezoelectric discs to a block of brass, and when hit with a pulse of electricity, they bulged slightly. According to his observations, this expansion caused the discs to push off of the brass block and accelerate in the opposite direction. The electric current also made the piezoelectric discs ever so slightly heavier, 
causing it to pull the brass block. So, when the electricity stops flowing, the whole ensemble will have scooted slightly forward. By repeating this process over and over, Woodward figured that the Mach effect thruster should accelerate. Even though his peers dismissed his nearly imperceptible results as a measurement error, he claimed that he could produce a few hundred nanonewtons of thrust out of his Mach effect drive. After years of dedicated work on his project, in 2015, Woodward and his teammate Heidi Fern presented a paper in a conference held by the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, claiming their device produced few micronewtons of thrust. Later, three other researchers who had tried out a Mach effect thruster in their labs confirmed that the machine could produce small but noticeable thrust. In 2017, NASA awarded Woodward $125,000 grant for his project. It was the first funding Woodward had ever received to work on his device. As part of the NASA grant, Woodward and Fern were tasked with boosting their thrusters' performance and finding a way to put them to practical use. And later in 2018, NASA awarded Woodward and Fern a larger grant worth $500,000. After one year of tests, the Mega Drive started producing tens of micronewtons of thrust, which Woodward never expected from his device. With ample new data in hand, they are now focused on getting their device into other researchers' hands so they can independently replicate their results. But no one is sure what's the right vibration frequency for the device and whether they will be able to replicate Woodward's results. If other researchers successfully replicated the results, the next big step would be an in-space demonstration of this device. So, what do you think about this device? Is Woodward a lunatic or a visionary? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos exploring futuristic technologies. And as always, thanks for watching.